What's up everyone? It's Brant Not Brenton here and welcome back to another episode of Let's Get Unreal. Okay guys, so before I get into this build of the tiny home, I wanted to introduce you all to Chuck. Chuck is the brand new owner and occupant of this tiny home. And in case if you didn't notice already, Chuck is a metahuman. Metahumans are digitally created photorealistic humans that come fully rigged with hair and clothing. So they're pretty cool. You'll be seeing a whole lot more of Chuck later and he actually even has his own backstory that we'll be getting into. But for now, it's time to get into the build. So I've been interested in a while now for building a tiny home actually the you know the smallest possible functional tiny home that you could build an unreal engine so that's kind of how i came up with this idea and let me clarify i don't mean i'm interested in building a tiny home in real life there would be a lot of problems with that because i'm pretty tall six foot six i don't think a tiny home would really work out for me oh yeah and when i say functional um before any of you guys get upset in the comments which i know someone's going to point something out functional meaning that you know it has a bathroom kitchen bed running water electricity it has all the stuff you need to live in a tiny home so if this was to be turned into a video game or something like that it would be functional for the player okay so that's what I mean by functional so building houses like this or homes or any other structures in Unreal Engine is kind of different from other games or applications you might have used and I'm not gonna na name the other big game here on this channel but you probably know what I'm talking about so unlike that game this is all done mod modularly um, mo modularly mo modularly so all these are modular pieces and that's how everything's put together so why am i not naming the other game and from now on and all you know purposes moving forward i'll just refer to it as the other game but yeah i don't want to have crossover to that in my channel because some of these ideas are similar but this is you know unreal engine only channel also the supporting applications that we use but i'm not going to mention the other game we'll just stick to unreal engine and if i ever bring that up i will say the other game but yeah as you guys know i'm kind of still new to this new to unreal engine um well i'm definitely new to it i'm still a beginner but i'm finding that doing these kinds of builds and building like this is very like relaxing and therapeutic so i'm really enjoying it but i highly recommend it to anyone out there who just likes to build maybe if you like you know lego in real life or play the other game or any other kind of building games you would really like this now one of the more challenging or difficult things to Unreal Engine is that the pieces don't always fit together perfectly. So sometimes you have to you know, do a lot of resizing. You have to scale, uh, move, position into place to get it exactly the way you want it. It really helps to have the snap tool set up or snap to origin set up. Otherwise, you're gonna spend a lot of time making these little micro adjustments to get everything to line up perfectly. So you can see I went with a yellow house here for this color and I've never wanted a yellow house in real life, but I just think it looks really good inside of Unreal Engine and some something to do with the shadows and the lighting. I think yellow looks really good on a house. So that's why I chose yellow for this tiny build, the tiny home. So right now you can see the main structure is looking really good and it's time to start adding the grass and a little bit of the yard. For all my textures, I just like to use Quixel Bridge and I like to use the highest resolution possible. Sometimes if that's, you know, 8K by 8K, that would be the best, but usually it's kind of 4K by 4K, but whatever one I find is the highest I'll use. And this was the one I liked for the grass the most. You can see a little bit of repeating or tiling um, but not up close so I wouldn't worry about it overall I think it looks really good for what we're gonna do here so the door was a real pain in the ass getting uh, set up the way I wanted it to you know this this door came from a different pack from the other packs I've been using in here so it didn't really line up the hinges didn't line up but I could make it work in the end by rotating it outwards to make it look like it's open but it's not perfect I think um, if you were to use it in a game though, it would it would work well and you wouldn't really notice. So these awnings you see me uh, putting in here are actually one of my favorite items um, in this build, but it's just one of these little things that I like a lot. I like the color, I like the green, the way it goes with the yellow, but if you're, if you're really paying attention, you'll see that this is where I made one of my first errors of the build. I forgot to put the awning on the back window and I didn't notice this till later. So I'm gonna go and put this in at the end of the, the video. You'll see me putting it back, but for now, it's okay. Um, no worries. It's just a small little detail I missed and that'll happen. And hopefully I just remember them and get back to them at the end of the build. And I know you guys have heard me mention packs now a few times, and those are actually packs that you do buy on Epic Marketplace. And sometimes some of them are free, but most of them do cost money. I almost always get all of mine when they're on sale. We've had huge sales now with the Black Friday sale, and now there's still a Christmas sale going on. So if you can get the packs, definitely get them on sale. Sometimes they're up to 75% off, which makes it really good, a uh, good value for doing builds like this. Um, 
some stuff comes default with the engine you know built in but there's not a lot of stuff there's some basic architectural pieces and meshes but if you want to start building stuff like this you will have to invest a little bit of money in some packs or find them um, for free on the marketplace and it's about here where i noticed that i also accidentally forgot to put in the front part of the gate uh, the fence you know the gate swings in and out so Unfortunately, that's something I'm gonna have to go add at the end, but you'll be able to see it at the end build, um, which will still be okay. You know, I really enjoy making these fences, um, just the way that they mod modularly build. Um, I really enjoy picking uh, the length and the size, and you get to pick how many pieces are in between um, some of them, and you can stretch it out to make everything fit. The way it just comes together in the end, it looks really good. I think the realistic um, aspect of the fences are one of the, the more fun things of the yard to build and this overall build. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed yet, but one of the really cool things about um, these objects and materials that I'm working with is that they have a worn look to them. So everything doesn't look like it's perfect. You know, it looks like it's been lived in and real. I think that really adds more to the realistic feel of these objects. So you can see we're starting to get into some of the more, I guess you could say personal items from Chuck. And this will start to kind of build his backstory a little bit. Like for example, he likes to barbecue. Um, he has a picnic table out here that he uses sometimes, but he also has some lawn gnomes and a little flamingo that he likes. So he kind of cares about his yard a little bit, but he's not the most super clean and fit guy as you can see or will be able to see. Oh, and you see he also has a dog house. So he is an animal lover. So that's a very good thing. Because remember, they all are very good dogs. That's right. They're very good dogs, despite what anyone else might tell you. Yeah, I don't know what was up with that rock or boulder or whatever you call it. It was it was kind of like bugging out. You can see those little uh, pieces of black mesh on there. So I just deleted it, but I left it in the video and the build just so you guys can see that everything's not always perfect all the time. And if something just doesn't work out, just delete it or go with something else. So Chuck likes to recycle. Um, he also likes flowers. He likes keeping his garden kind of as neat as he can. It's really not so much of a garden. It's just uh, flower planters, but that's the closest as Chuck's gonna get to a garden right now. Cause I guess he doesn't really wanna put extra effort into you know maintaining a real garden, but he will keep these plants looking nice outside the windows. So now I start getting into the foliage, uh, foliage. And you know, I'd really like to dig deeper into the, the foliage, dive deeper into it, but it's such a extensive thing. There's so many different kinds of plants and shrubs and everything you can put in here. And just the time that it takes to do all of that, I, I could have doubled the you know video just going through all the plants and stuff. So based on this build, this is gonna be kind of like, uh, more of a part of an overall neighborhood, I think. And I don't need to go crazy with the trees and plants outside. So I just wanted to put a couple or a few trees out here. I got those trees from the packs, but you can also get a ton from Quixel Bridge. But these are gonna be fine for now. You know, it gives them something to look out outside of the window. And I think it looks good for our purposes here. So adding this vent to the wall was pretty annoying. Just lining it up and figuring out the way I wanted it. Um, I couldn't really tell using it on one side you know versus the other because i was outside and couldn't see inside but this is eventually going to be used for the shower vent and i actually end up going and changing it uh, the size of it again later because i just can't get it to line up correctly but you'll see what it looks like later but i think this really added to the overall effect all right before we start going and uh, working on the interior i just wanted to add a couple little things out here to give it a real sense of you know lived in yard and patio before we move on in so chuck has a nice floor uh it's pretty nice actually in fact it might be a little too nice for chuck but we're gonna be real generous to him in this build and give him the floor he's always dreamed of but let's kind of go with this blah wallpaper um it's not the best looking wallpaper but it is different from the default one and i think it goes well with everything else it just kind of color coordinates i'm not the best interior designer but i think this one looks good this fold out sofa is a really cool object from one of the packs you know originally i would have liked to use some kind of like a bunk bed type uh situation like in a dorm room where there's a top bed and then underneath there's like an area for a desk and then there would be a ladder going up but that that object was just not available in the pack so i thought this fold out bed was the next best thing for using in a tiny home because you know you can fold it out and use it as a bed and then fold it back in and use it as a couch. So I think this would be a good time to start telling a little more of the backstory of Chuck. And unfortunately, this is where the story kind of takes a sad turn. So Chuck is a recent divorcee, or is it divorcee? What matters is Chuck recently got divorced. And that's kind of the main reason why he had to move in a t into a tiny home. It was either this or he had to go live in an apartment in a really bad part of town. And he didn't want to live in the bad part of town. so. 
he chose to live in this um, tiny home kind of out in the middle of nowhere. See, some people choose to live in tiny homes because they're minimalists or they want to do good or do well for the, um, the environment. But that's not the case for Chuck. Chuck was more um, kind of forced into this situation a little bit. It was a financial situation. So he had to move away from the city or even the suburbs if he wanted to still uh, have his own place. I'm not saying that tiny homes are only for uh, single newly divorced dads who can't afford to live anywhere else, okay? I'm not saying that. So don't come at me in the comments um, criticizing me over that. I'm, all I'm saying is, this was Chuck's decision. He didn't want to live in a bad neighborhood, so he chose to live in a tiny home because that was all he could really afford at this point in his life. And as you can see here, these cabinets are also very difficult to put together. Uh, I kind of wish these these uh, kitchen sinks and drawer areas came with these cabinet uh, covers or doors already built in. Not sure why they give you the options. I guess if you want to do different doors. I know I do have some other ones in my packs, but these were also a pain in the ass to set up. I know I keep saying that pain in the ass, but um, these were difficult to put together. So the shower and bathroom area is actually probably my favorite part of the interior of the tiny home. Um, it's just so odd, but yet it's functional. I think, um, I'm not sure if there's real tiny homes out there that work this way, but you know, water might probably get on outside of the bathroom area and onto the flooring. But I think it's really neat. Um, it looks cool. I like the tiling, the tile texture that I put on here, the tile material. And I also like this wall that I put up that divides it from the rest of the area. Some of the packs that I used have a lot of really great options for everything from like the drain to the shower head to the knobs um, to put on the wall for the, you know, hot water, cold water. Then also just stuff like the, um, the toilet paper, um, sink cleaner or toilet cleaner, whatever you want to call it. So there's all just tons of tiny little details that they put into these packs that you can use for objects when you're building your builds and game levels. The details on these little shampoo bottles just look so real to me. It looks like something you'd really use in your own bathroom um, when you're using shampoo or shaving cream or anything like that. And like I, like I said, all of these options are available to you to stick in the in the house and the shower area if you want. Another thing I really enjoyed building and putting together was just a shower curtain. There wasn't really a way to hang it up, so I you know, found this clothing line and I rotated it and flipped it and then attached it to the ceiling so then I was just able to hang the shower curtain on that. And that made perfect sense to me because that's a great way for Chuck to kind of divide the kitchen from the shower and also give them some privacy. Looking back in hindsight, I think I might have made the desk and the chair here a little too small. Um, especially considering Chuck's size, he is a little overweight and big, so I'm not quite sure if he's gonna be able to fit in this desk and chair, but things were starting to get really cramped, so I just wanted to get it fit. But I think I could um, change the size of this later in the build and it would still look just as good. So I might end up increasing the size later. Well, let's wait and see. So I love the microwave here because obviously there's no oven. Being a tiny home, um, you have to be very efficient with your space and Chuck doesn't have enough room for a full size oven. So he has to have the microwave, but that's perfect for everything that he cooks. Cause you know, he mostly just eats microwave dinners and he reheats other food. So the microwave works well for him. You'll see here that Chuck is still kind of old school because he has a regular phone. I don't think he has a cell phone yet for some weird reason. Uh, maybe cause his credit wasn't good enough to get uh, the cell phone bill to sign up for it. So he still has to use a regular house phone and that's why you see this here. A lot of the rest of these objects, such as these plants and these pots, are just pretty common household objects. Like I said, I can't say enough good things about some of these packs, the amount of detail and um, different options you have to place stuff like this. And here you can see the issue with that uh, vent that I was having I told you about. I had to go in and kind of replace it again because I really wanted it to line up with the shower so it realistically looked like the air, the venting from the shower would be passing out through to the outside vent and everything would look real and work well together. Now I can share a little bit more with you about Chuck's backstory. He's a photographer and the economy has not been treating him very well right now, so that's another reason why he's kind of in this financial situation, but he still loves photography, and you can see that by his old school camera he keeps here on his desk. And also, Chuck used to play baseball in high school for the varsity team. You can see that here by the trophy he keeps on his shelf. 
Chuck doesn't have space for uh, an actual closet right now because he's living in a tiny home. So the best he can do is hang up like a hoodie or a pair of jeans just on the shelf until he can find like a portable closet that he can maybe stick somewhere else in the house. This is the, the best he's gonna be able to do. On the bright side, Chuck does get to hang some of his photographs he's taken from his uh, career as a photographer. You can see these in several of the photos he has hung up on the walls around the house. And you might have noticed that cat magazine he has on the desk. I don't know why he has that magazine. He's a dog person, uh, he's not into cats. For some reason he has this, you know, uh, strange cat magazine sitting on his desk. Don't ask me why. I think these boots are a nice little touch to put on the floor. I just shows you that maybe he's still into you know outdoor hiking or something like that or some kind of work boot so when he's not just lounging around the house or out in the yard he does wear these work boots when he goes out now depending on how detailed you want to get you can actually put you know uh electrical outlets light switches and all that in there so it depends how far you want to go down that rabbit hole but that's pretty much the level of detail that i wanted to stop at was using um, outlets and light switches. You can also see the old school coffee machine I put in there because what newly divorced single dad wouldn't have one of those, right? Okay guys, well we're finally starting to get to the end of the build and everything's looking really good as far as the interior goes. I think I'm good there. I just want to go back outside and kind of add some more to the exterior shot. I want to add some shrubs or bushes out around to the perimeter of the house. And then after that, I want to start working on fixing some of the a couple of the mistakes I made earlier. But first, let me move Chuck into his garden chair or lawn chair, whatever you would call that. Um, it'll give me a chance to show you how easily you can pose metahumans and how good they'll look with any of your you know environment objects that you might have. So posing metahumans and characters inside of Unreal Engine is a whole nother area, which I haven't really even gotten into yet. And I've just barely touched the surface with being able to import Chuck and posing him into this chair but you can see there's a ton of like little fine details and movements to put into his arms and legs and waist just to get him to sit down in this chair to have him look good all right let's go back and shrink this gnome this guard gnome i think he looked a little too big then we'll add the back awning like i told you about that we were missing see you guys all these things if you mess up it's no big deal just go back at the end and you can fix all your mistakes and it'll look good and look great for the final build and finally we have the missing front gate and once that's set in place and positioned, that should about wrap everything up. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm super excited about this series of videos I'm going to be doing where I do Let's Builds like this. Um, I'm going to do one last kind of walkthrough for you. I'll go through the whole property, the outside, the inside, and I'll take my face off so you don't have to keep looking at me. But uh, enjoy the build, and I'll see you next time on Let's Get Unreal.